Hi folks, I'm Craig Taylor and as always a huge thank you for joining me here on my YouTube channel The Bushcraft Padawan. Regular viewers and subscribers of my channel will know that in the past I've put out a few basic introductory videos around the subject of map reading and land navigation. And in a few of those videos I've referred to scale. In particular, one of the videos, which I'll link to up here, I talk about scale being one of the things that you should check when you pick up a map for the first time, or when you pick up a map that you may, perhaps haven't used for a while, or maybe if you're using different maps for one journey, scale is one of the things that you should constantly be checking and rechecking and reconfirming. But I haven't actually explained what scale is. I've not gone into any detail about scale. So what I thought would be useful would be to spend some time in this video talking through scale. And there's two key things that I want to cover off. First of all, I want to explain what scale is. What does it mean? And the second thing I want to look at is the relationship between scale and detail. And there's actually something of an inverse relationship between the two, but I don't want to steal my thunder. Let's look at that later on. So initially then, let's talk about scale. And to help me illustrate this point, I've got three different maps with me today that I'm going to use to help to bring my point alive. The first map that I have is this one. I'm going to bring it slightly closer to the camera. It's an escape and evasion map. Hopefully you can see that. It's an escape and evasion map of Bosnia and Herzegovina. It's a fabric map. And the scale of the map is right there in the bottom centre. One to 500,000. The scale of this map is one to 500,000. You can see that roughly in the centre of the screen there. So that's one of the maps that I'm going to refer to. The other map that I'm going to refer to is an Ordnance Survey Great Britain map of Grand Town and Aviemore. And the scale of this map, you can see, is 1 to 50,000. 1 to 50,000. And the final map that I'm going to use to get my point across is this one here. It's another Ordnance Survey map. This is of Eastbourne and Beachy Head, and the scale, which you should be able to pick up there, is 1 to 25,000. 1 to 25,000. So three different maps there, three different scales of map. 1 to 500,000, one of them was 1 to 50,000, and the final one was 1 to 25,000. Three different scales of map. Now I've not told you anything there that you can't read for yourself when you pick that map up or when you look at that map. I've just told you what it says on the cover of the map or in the map detail. So let's talk about what that actually means in the real world. What do you need to know about that scale? And again I'm going to use these three maps to bring that point alive. Let's go back to the escape and evasion map. Just remind ourselves that this was a 1 to 500,000 map. There it is, 1 to 500,000. What does this mean then? Well this means that one unit of measurement on the map, on the physical map, is equal to 500,000 units of that same measurement out on the ground in the real world. That's what it means in terms of that map. Let's have a look at the 1 in 50,000 map. That means that one unit of measurement on this map, the paper map I've got in my hand, one unit of measurement on that is equal to 50 thousand units of the same measurement out on the ground in the real world. Final map, 1 to 25,000. You know what's coming. 
one unit of measurement on this physical map I'm touching, one unit of measurement on there is equal to 25,000 units of that same measurement out on the ground in the real world. Now if you think about what I've just said there, you will have not heard me use the word centimetre, millimetre, inch or anything like that. I have purposefully and intentionally not spoken about a specific unit of measurement. What I actually used were the words units of measurement or unit of measurement. And why did I do that? Well the reason I did it is because, because of the way that scale works, the specific unit of measurement is irrelevant. It, it doesn't matter. Let me tell you what I mean by that. Let's go back to the escape and evasion map. One millimetre on this map would equal 500,000 millimetres in the real world, on the ground. It's just as right to say that one centimetre on that map would equal 500,000 centimetres on the ground in the real world. One inch on that map would represent 500,000 inches on the ground in the real world. The, the unit that you're working in is largely irrelevant when it comes to scale. It's important to you, of course, but in terms of the way that the map scale relates to the ground, it's irrelevant. It's about a unit of measurement. Same principle applies with this map. An Ordnance Survey Great Britain map, one in 50,000. One millimetre on this map represents 50,000 millimetres on the ground. One centimetre on this map represents, you know what's coming, 50,000 centimetres on the ground. One inch on this map represents 50,000 inches on the ground. And just the same with a 1 in 25,000 metre, 1 in 25,000 map. One millimetre equals 25,000 millimetres on the ground. A centimetre on the map, 25,000 centimetres on the ground. One inch on the map, 25,000 centimetres on the ground. Hell, one mobile phone on the map would represent 25,000 of the same mobile phones on the ground. The unit of measurement is largely irrelevant when it comes to scale. So that's the way that scale works in terms of what your map represents versus the size on the ground. So hopefully if you've forgotten what scale is all about, if you've never really thought about map scale, hopefully now you've got an idea. The first number on your map scale represents the map, the one represents something on the map, and the bigger number afterwards represents something on the ground. One unit of measurement on the map represents whatever unit of measurements on the ground. So that scale ticked off. Let's have a look at something that in my opinion often gets overlooked and in my experience of teaching recruits map reading was one of the hardest things for them to wrap their heads around. And it's this relationship between scale and detail. And I think one of the reasons people you know, fail to get their heads around it and misunderstand it is because it's very, very, very easy to make a false assumption about the relationship between the two. People often hear large scale and what they think of is large amount of detail. People often hear a small scale map and in their heads think small scale map, small amount of detail. And I get why people think that because it's kind of logical. It's almost too easy to make that relationship between the two fit. Large scale, large detail, small scale, small detail. In actual fact, it's absolutely the opposite way round. A large scale map will show a small amount of detail. Let me show that to you. 
This is the largest scale map we've talked about in this video. One to 500,000. There it is there. That is a large scale map. Just look at the map itself. Let's have a look at some areas of that map there. There's not a lot of detail on there. You've got, let's have a look what you've got. You've got some roads, you've got rivers. The towns are just marked with a dot and the name of the town. There's no idea, it's Sarajevo, which, which is a big place. That's just a block of orange. There's no individual streets or buildings or anything like that. This is a large scale map. It shows a small amount of detail. The flip side of that, the one in 25,000 map, that is a small scale map, small scale map. Now look at the detail on this, if the camera can pick that up. You can see individual roads, you can see individual buildings, you can see fences in farmers' fields, you can see sheep folds, you can see small streams flowing into to larger water features. This map has a large amount of detail on it. Large amount of detail, but it's a small scale map. Compared to small amount of detail, but it's a large scale map map so it's the opposite relationship why is this important well because i've seen several people want to have a lot of detail they want a large amount of detail so they have bought online large scale maps and needless to say they've been quite disappointed when they've received them because they don't doesn't have the detail that they want so it's important to understand this relationship between scale and detail large scale map small amount of detail. Small scale map, large amount of detail. It's an opposite relationship between the two. So there you go, that's the end of this video. Just thought it was worthwhile to, to pause and think about scale for a little while because it is something that I've been referring to. I may refer to it again in the future and it's just important to perhaps refresh ourselves around it. For those of you that are seasoned navigators and map readers, there's probably nothing in this video for you, although there may have been a few things that maybe refreshed your memory around some ideas. For those of you that, that have learned something from this, for those of you that have thought, I never knew that, or that makes sense now, or, oh, I get it now, if this video has been of some value to you, please do click that thumbs up button. It's just, it should probably just be un underneath here somewhere, looking just over there, down there. Please do feel free to click that thumbs up button. I'd really appreciate it. If you think that there's somebody in your network that would benefit from this, tweet it to them, share it with them via Facebook, put it on a Facebook group, send them an email to it, something like that. Just, just spread the word if you think there's somebody else out there that would benefit from a better understanding or refreshing themselves on the subject of scale. And ultimately, if you've enjoyed watching the video and you're not yet a subscriber, do please click that subscribe button. It should just be in this corner. No, this corner of the screen, this corner of the screen down here, there we go, it should just be down there now. Please do click the subscribe button so you don't miss out on any future videos from me. As always, many thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.